This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle, Bumper to Bumper, helping you and your car feel better. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. It's a great time of year. We've got the Good Guys Car Show coming up next week and NASCAR this weekend. Welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we are here every Saturday from 11 right here on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we are helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. If you've got car questions, we've got answers, so we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. And the other way you can get a hold of us is by texting questions to 411-923. You can send us questions there. Today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, we're doing some fact or fiction. We've got open phones taking your calls. We'll be talking about the Good Guys Car Show next week and what you can expect in the three choices in auto repair. Is there only three, Matt? I don't know, Dave. What are they? <laughs> well, we've been talking. I mean, that, you know, we joke around and uh, and say there there's uh, good, cheap, and fast. Mm. But you only get two. So which two do you want? If it's good and cheap, well, it'll be done next week. <laughs> uh, because we've I know got shops fit, like that. We've got to fit you in. Right. Uh if it's uh, good and fast, I, I wouldn't count on it being cheap. But I don't know that I want cheap either. Maybe inexpensive. You right. could end up with some cheap at at times. But you know, we bring this up because there's a there's a, a trend. You know, there's always somebody with the dot com coming up with another mm. way to skin a cat, so to speak. We don't skin cats. <laughs> it's inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so you know, there's a there's a uh, website back east called Repair Jungle, mm. and uh, you know the the whole premise of the of of the operation is they want to find repair shops. They want to get a consumer that thinks they need something, or maybe in fact does need something, and and then you go put it out for bid, mm. and these shops then buy or pay for the prospect of giving you a bid. So they're they're going to come in. They're going to well, they want to have the lowest cost because that's what you—that's what the purpose of a bid is, I guess—is to to establish a price, and, and so the lowest guy wins, and then you take your car there and you get the lowest price repair. What are, what is but, the? I mean, I could see some good coming out of it, you know, but I could also see uh, some major pitfalls coming out of it. Give me a pitfall. Well, it's, it's a. I think it's a recipe for disaster. The expectations that one might might have, being the consumer, that they're going to still have good, and they're going to get uh, cheap too. Get the like lowest good price. Is, good is universal. Like any of those numbers you look yeah. at, they're all good. I had one of these people approach me and they and talking about, it, and I said, your 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 system and your thought process is completely flawed. It doesn't work. Um, you're going to take my shop, Virginia Auto Service. We're BBB rated. We've been in business 19 years. Uh, master technicians, and here's all of our credentials, and 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 that's what our customers come to enjoy that quality and and uh, expect when they come there. And then you want me to go bid against some guy that I have no idea what I'm bidding is. Is he putting on a four dollar auto value? Uh, belt from Acme Auto Parts, but the one that I'm using is twenty dollars. Mm. D- did you save anything? Well, we all have the same economic it, engine, yeah. So I, I think the legitimate heart of practicing shops are all going to be within the same realm. Now, there's people who could take advantage of this bid system because are you going to take your car apart after you got it fixed to see what they actually really did? You know, we've pulled off timing covers where we thought a whole bunch of stuff was going to be done, and, and none of it was done. And I'm not saying that's happening. I mean, I, I want to find that guy that's doing business like that. Uh, but but who's going to verify that the work was really done and to what quality and what expectation? There's no, there's no checks and balances in this bid process. I'm not necessarily a fan of the bid process if we use it wrong. You know, I know in... I've heard, at least in Europe, is that they do bidding, but they take the high price and they take the low price, and then they average the two, and whoever's closest to the average, that's who wins the bid. Well, we've talked about phone price shopping, and this is just the silent phone shopping, really, <laughs> right? is what this is. We we get it all the time at the shop, and sometimes I can have a good conversation, and, 
and talk to somebody. And then sometimes I'm probably the wrong person to be answering the phone because I get so frustrated. And, and people want a price. If I haven't looked at your car, it doesn't matter if it's me or anybody else. We really need to look at the car. You can't just have a car and say, oh, it's got 120,000 miles and the valve cover gas it's leaking. How much? There's so many other things that touch that valve cover. Uh, you know, maybe there's a PCV hose that's cracked. Maybe the valve cover is not even leaking. That's just what you think it is. Uh, mm. So you could end up with a repair that you don't need. Or so did that, you save money, or do you spend money on something you didn't need? Well, or you get the you you get a you get a price on something, um, and it's not the complete job. Mm. So this guy, the, the, where the, this is where the expectations come out of alignment. But you told me it was going to be a hundred dollars. Yeah, but I didn't know that was broken, this was broken, and, and, and this hose that attaches that should be replaced. So it, it's a me- – I think it's – You're trying to commoditize something that is complete, completely not commoditizable because no, no two cars have the same problem. I mean, relatively speaking, they can have relatively similar problems, but there's always extenuating circumstances. When I was in the construction business and sold construction equipment – I watched contractors that were bid, you know, they would look for blueprints with obvious mistakes in them, and they would be the low bid, and when they were the low bid, they would get the job, and then they got a thing called change order, and they could go back to the general contractor and say, oh, yeah, there's a big mistake here, and then they put in a change order. Well, now that change order doesn't have to go out to bid because they already got the job. So they would make up the lost margin in the change order, and I'm afraid something like that could happen here. Yeah, sure, we'll bid you for an axle, but the reality is your axle seal's leaking and your hub bearing's bad. And Those are change it. orders. Now that we have your car apart... Get your pants down. Right. <laughs> now we get your car corner. apart, where are you going to go? You know, so yeah, it, you said that the three choices are better, cheaper, faster, and you can pick good, two of the good, three. Good, fast, cheap, yeah. Good, fast, cheap, but the, the other one we're missing out is relationship. And when you when you treat your, your, your wife or your partner, you know, like, honey, I'll love you as long as you do all the things I need you to do. That's not a relationship, you know. I mean, I take the good with the bad. Some days it, she's not my biggest fan, you know, and then, <laughs> or I'm not her biggest fan, but you know what? We still stick together. So if I look at my auto shop as a commodity every time I get a price from them, you know, we, we've established trust. I know they're doing right by me. I'm just going to eliminate that anxiety in my life. I may check up on them once in a while, but for the most part, once I've got a relationship with a shop, I trust them. They're doing a good job for me. Well, and this is something that, I mean, I've, I've believed this over time and earlier in my career as a technician, and I never, and, and that was back before I had to run the shop or before I even thought of owning a shop, but I'm, I was working and and I worked in an environment where the technicians communicated with the customers. And it's the customers that you have a relationship with that trust you. And you know that you're going to – some days you're going to win working on the car. You're going to beat the clock. You're going to get things done fast or things line out. All the plants are aligned. And some days they're going to drive that damn bus right on top of you or under the bus trying to figure that out. And you know you can't. Not that you can't, but it just doesn't work to bill them for every second or everything that you did. No, we, or take, you, the good or with gotta, we take the good with the bad. I mean, that's something. business. But as a tech, the customers who just say, here's my car, take care of it. I'm not saying that's an open checkbook, mm-hmm. but within reason. Just You're take care of it. I service. trust you. That's the one where you polish that thing just a little bit better you clean that part just a little bit more you give it maybe that extra pressure wash when you're done that isn't part of the job but the guy that's nickel and diamond you to death and always wanting you know what's this and how much was that and what about this and what about that and how much was the lettuce part of the you know the hamburger has lettuce and it has tomatoes well how much is the lettuce part of that 99 cent hamburger mm. it, you're just take the hamburger and go <laughs> okay, we'll work on your car, but that's not at the end of the day. You're not getting the best. No, we got it, a we got a little code a... in our shop. But we a little write it on the invoice. S N G. Now I'm giving this away, but it stands for super nice guy or super nice gal. Anytime we have a customer that just comes in and just just goes out of the way to be nice, I tell you what, we absolutely try and return that favor. You know, but that's relationship. We enjoy we enjoy working for people. We enjoy working on their car. We enjoy being a part of their solution. But when the, when we're treated like a commodity, it changes the outlook for us. Now this is a vendor to customer you know deal. It's it's no more than it's not relationship. In relationship, you get better service when you have relationship. Well, and when you have the relationship, for example, and the timing belt is the easy one. That's the one that a lot of the dealerships and a lot of people try to commoditize. Oh, deal uh, timing belt two ninety nine. 
It's not. Mm. It's just in this article. That's what it talks about. You want to get a price on a time belt. So if I could, if you call me and I said, well, it's probably about a thousand dollars, and but I say, it, but we do this, this, and that. The next guy, all that customer heard was a thousand dollars. The next guy is, is four hundred dollars. Oh my gosh, they were ripping me off by six hundred bucks. But no, mm, one has one selling you something for ten dollars. You get nine dollars worth of stuff. The next guy can sell it to you for six, but you only got three dollars worth of stuff. Who, what's a better deal? What's well, a better value? Well, not only that, but but the um, uh, well, when we come you're back, you're waving over there, Dave. Got me all messed up. But <laughs> in a relationship, you don't have to worry about the guy doing that to you. He's going to do he, right by you because he time. knows you. So when we come back, we're going to have Betsy Bennett on the line from Good Guys Car Show, and we're taking phone calls at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. It's the Good Guys, 16th Southwest Nationals at Westworld in Scottsdale, November 15th through the 17th. This is the can't-miss event of the season. Check out over 3,000 classic American vehicles at our giant show and shot, including hot rods, customs, muscle cars, and trucks. And don't miss the Champions Arena. Visit vendor exhibits and shop the swap meet and cars for sale corral. Plus, enjoy free fun stuff for the kids. For tickets and details, visit good-guys.com. Good Guys, celebrating 30 years of cool cars, cool people, good times. Next to your family, there's nothing more precious than your castle, right? Kaiko Roofing understands that, which is why we are crazy about quality and protecting you, your loved ones, and your biggest investment. Don't wait for an emergency at your castle. If your roof is more than 10 years old, have the trusted pros at Kaiko Roofing give you a free inspection today. Flat, foam, tile, or shingle, Kaiko handles them all. From a small leak to a complete new roof, Kaiko has you covered. At Kaiko, we're proud to install peace of mind by using only the finest materials with the most skilled workers. All Backed by the industry's best owner's pride guarantee. Since 1994, Kaiko has repaired or replaced tens of thousands of valley roofs with over 50% of our business coming from referrals or repeat customers. In fact, over 98% of our customers say they would refer us to a friend or family member. For a free checkup and financing options, call 602-944-4600 or go to KaikoRoofing.com for more details. Kaiko Roofing. We're crazy about quality. There have been so many changes in Phoenix over the past couple of decades, but one thing has not changed in all that time. Kurtz, family owned and operated, Kurtz Auto Repair has been reliably servicing and repairing vehicles for Valley car owners for over 24 years. Just one block east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell, Kurtz has done it all with a perfect Better Business Bureau record. For service, call 602-588-2878 or check them out online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic, if your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Matt Allen. This guy standing across from me is Dave Riccio. And as always, we're here every Saturday at 11 talking about cars. And if you want to play with us and get involved in the conversation, have a question about your car, maybe a comment about what we were talking about in the first segment, choosing your auto repair shop and that relationship, you can do that by by, by dialing 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. And as I look out the window here and see there's not a cloud in the sky, this reminds me of the convertible top down, the pulling the hot rod out of the garage, and car shows. And we do have a big car show coming up next week. <laughs> and uh, Dave, what do we got going on up at uh, Westworld, right? We've got the Good Guys Car Show, which I was able to make it out to last year. Took my son out there, had a good time. We brought Bets. Betsy Bennett is on the line, who is with the Good Guys Car Show. And Betsy, for those who haven't gone to the Good Guy, Good Guy. Good, uh, Good Guys Car Show and don't know what to expect. What can they expect? Why do they want to come out and see the Good Guys Car Show? Well, first of all, good morning to you guys. Thanks for having me on. Um, what they're going to see when they come out, this event has really become one of the must-attend events on our schedule. Everyone loves to come to Scottsdale. Uh, so they'll see about 3,000 hot rods, customs, classics, and muscle cars on display. There are commercial exhibits, uh, spot meet, cars for sale, 
there's a Good Guys Autocross, which runs all three days of the event, which has become wildly popular. There's a model car show. There's a make-and-take session for the kids to build models. So if you love cars and you love the whole car industry, this is certainly the place to be for next weekend. Well, you mentioned autocross, and that's one of my – there's so many things out there that could be my favorite, actually. But is there a new twist to the autocross this year, something mixing up? You know, up there is. We actually um, – we do have the autocross all three days of the event. But this year – what we did is we had we put together a program called the Autocross Shootout. And that means that every single event that we had autocross at this year, we qualified the fastest car or truck from any class to come to Scottsdale and compete as the winner from that specific show in the shootout. So the shootout is sponsored by BF Goodrich and the winner of the autocross shootout from all the different events will win cash and prizes of ten thousand dollars, and it's there's going to be some amazing competition. It's so fun. We were just at the SEMA show all this week and oh, had yeah. all the auto yeah <laughs> had all the pro autocross drivers there in our booth signing posters. And there's just a lot of buzz right now about the autocross and the shootout finals. And this guy's coming from all the other shows around the country to compete. So it should be a lot of fun for people to see. Well, and you know you don't have to be a gearhead out there. I. My mom, who's much older, I guess. <laughs> that is <isn't> sounding <laughs> right. I didn't mean Poor that. Mom. But my mom, who grew up in Southern California back whenever, I mean, she she grew up in the in the hot rod era, and she loves seeing these old car shows. Say, oh, that's a forty nine, or that's a. Right. I mean, I think it's just neat because there's people of all walks of life out there. There's all mm-hmm. kinds of really trick mm-hmm. cars, stuff in process, a swap meet. Uh, there's really something for the whole family to do out there, right? Yeah, there is. And you know what's really cool about our events is they are family-oriented. We try and have things for the kids to do. But really, it's just kind of a cool experience to see all these older cars. It's like a history lesson on wheels for a lot of people because they look so radically different from what we see now on the freeways. You know, a 32 Ford doesn't look anything like a Ford we see today. So it's really kind of a great experience, especially for little kids, to come out and see these cars and what they look like. And, you know, you see everything from radically customized cars to perfectly restored as they were when they rolled off the line. So it's a great, you know, broad spectrum that we get to see at all of our events, not just at Scottsdale, but but, you know, this one's hard to beat. As an event on our schedule, it's pretty hard to beat. Well, I know there's a twist on the autocross this year. What is What else has been added to the show that you guys are doing? Well, we also have this year, we had the spring show as well. We have the All-American Sunday. And that means that we've taken a twist on our shows in Pleasanton, California, which are called All-American Get-Togethers. And we've taken that and created it as a Sunday-only feature of our national event. So on Sunday, the event will be open to all years American-made and powered cars and trucks. So if somebody has a 2012 Dodge Charger and it's all customized and they want to bring it out, they're absolutely welcome to bring it out. We have special Sunday awards for those guys. They can run the autocross. So it's a lot of fun. You know, we, you know, we believe a good guys, our philosophy is people who love cars are car guys and car guys want to hang out with car guys. So we want to open that up and, and let people come on out and experience at one of our national events. We're very proud of, of what we have built in this 30 years since we've been in existence. And, and this just adds another element to that. Well, I took my son out there last year and he had a good time. We're going out again this year. For people that want to go and find out more information, what's the location and what time and does it run through the weekend? Or It does. The event site is actually Westworld, Scottsdale. And um, people can purchase tickets two ways to the event. They can purchase them at the event site all three days. Or you can buy them on our website, which is www.good and then a hyphen and then the word guys.com. So good-guys.com. Click on the link for the buy your spectator tickets and it'll walk you through the process. Uh, general admission tickets are $18. Kids ages 7 to 12 are $6. And then the little guys 6 and under are free. So there is also, because Westworld is a big event site, and spectator parking sometimes can be far away, there are complimentary shuttles that bring people up to the gate. So we try and make it easy and fun for everyone to come on out and spend the day with us, spend the weekend. It's a great time. Well, Betsy, thanks for coming on the line with us and telling us about the Thank show. You. I'm looking forward to it. So We are, too. Hope the weather holds, and we will see you out there for sure. Okay. I'm going to hold you to it. <laughs> you, for sure. Thanks, Betsy. Thanks, Betsy. And you know, Dave, there is on BumperToBumperRadio.com, there is a link and more details about the Good Guys show. I know that Good Dash Guys is a little... If you don't remember, but bumper to bumper radio dot com. You better you know always, bumper to bumper radio dot com. That's right, and you can always uh, go out there and get them at the uh, 
you know, at, at the gate, so to speak. Too. Let's so, see if we but. can sneak in Nancy in Phoenix on a 2007 Dodge Caravan. Go ahead, Nancy. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi. What can we help you with, Nancy? You're on. Hi, Matt and Dave. You know, I listen to you guys every single week. I know nothing about cars. I have a 2007 Dodge Caravan. And when I bought it, um, the dealer went out of um, business right away. And so I didn't know who the heck I was involved with after that. I've never really had it um, serviced except for constant oil changes. Mm -hmm. I've done all that. But when I bought it, the salesman told me something about I had to constantly... Um, you know, if the engine light came on, it was because I had to click the gas tank. Okay, so yeah. do you have a check engine light on right now? I do, and I've okay. constantly had that since I've had the car. Okay. Well, Nancy, what we need to do is find you a shop, and it looks like you're in Phoenix. So if you go to bumper to bumper radio.com you'll find a map with a lot of shops and it is very common or it used to be it's less common now but with a car with a check engine light on a 1996 and newer uh or maybe it's 97 and newer you can have a problem where the it's a vapor leak and it's just simply because of the gas cap but that's not always the problem we need to get you somebody that can find and find out why the check engine light's on and you can send us an email at bumper to bumper radio.com so when we come back we've got open lines at 602-277-5827 you're listening to bumper to bumper radio Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, here along with Matt Allen, and we are here to help you with your car every Saturday from 11 to noon. And up first this segment, we're going to go with Brent, and then we've got Dave and Brian and Daryl, but Brent has got a 2001 Chevrolet Suburban. Go ahead, Brent. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, guys. How you doing? Thanks for taking my call. You bet. What can we do for you? All right, I've got a uh, 01 Suburban three-quarter ton that I can't figure out what's going on with uh, when I accelerate. It's almost like I have my foot on the brake. Does that make sense? Do you, have your, foot on, do you have your foot on the brake? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, that was the first one I, I checked, and I, I was okay with that one. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it, uh, it almost races between first and second gear. Like it races and then shifts into second. And mm. then it does it again in second gear, and then it's fine after that. I've uh, it threw a code uh, the first time of a throttle position sensor. Okay. I changed. I changed that one. It didn't fix the problem. Um, I then changed the uh, gas pedal position sensor, thinking that would do it. Did the code that come back at all? Did you? Re- there is no. It's not throwing any codes now. The check engine light's not on or anything like that. And it idles rough when I when it sits. It, it's it's real choppy when it uh, when I'm like at a red light or something. It's it's not it's not idling well. So do we have a we have a shift issue and it feels a little like um like, I, like the brakes are applied when you take off. So explain it to me this way. So you're at the stoplight, your foot's on the brake, the light turns uh, green, you take your foot off the brake, and you give it gas. And let's just say you're going to accelerate normally up to 45, 50 miles an hour. You're going down southern. What, what at what point do you feel like there's something wrong? Is it in that first five miles an hour? Is it at 15 miles an hour? Is it 25 miles an hour? Yeah, it's right at about uh, like five or ten miles an hour. It's almost it's not a lag. It's almost like it's it's being held back. I, I don't know a better way to explain it. And if I take my foot off the gas pedal when it when it gets to that higher RPMs right before it shifts, then it shifts smoothly. If I just hold it down, then it shifts. It almost races, and then it shifts. I know it's probably not a good way to explain it, but it's it's almost like if I take my gas, it's almost like manually shifting it. If I take my foot off the gas pedal, then the then the car shifts into gear, the second I'm, gear. I'm still thinking either the engine's not running right. When the engine's not running right, your foot is way more into the gas than it normally would be to get the same result. So the transmission won't want to shift because it sees maximum TPS, a real high throttle position. So you can actually control the shifting by letting your foot back off the gas or with the foot feed. doesn't mean it's necessarily related to that transmission. It's just the transmission's not getting good control signals because maybe we got an engine that's not running right. I mean, that's the thing that I think is going on. Or there is a possibility that the transmission is tying up on the inside because that'll cause that real draggy braking feeling. 
but I, I'm that's, not. That's almost what it feels like. It's almost like um, it's almost like it's in four low. I guess if for a better way to explain it. Dave, you know what I think? Something like that. I mean, we need a test drive. Somebody's got yeah. got to be able to go in and drive that car and, and and get it to act up. And and like you said, if it's the transmission can only do what it's told to do. And if and if 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 the wires are crossed between the brains, so to speak, and right. uh, it's it's just not going to function right. Almost generally in a road test, I can tell you pretty quickly. You know, are we talking about an engine problem? Or are we talking about a transmission problem? He's in Mesa, so if you got a good shop, bumper to bumper radio dot com. If not, I'm not offended if you come up to Tri City Transmission. We'll take it for a spin just as a courtesy, and maybe I can point you in the right direction. Just off that, I'll, I'll feel like I know a whole lot more. I'm, I'm, I can't tell if that's what we're feeling now, Dave. Can someone just pop in for a test drive, or is it best to call and say, "Hey, I'm on my way"? Because I mean, it's, it could be hit or miss, right? Yeah, hit or miss. We kind of got to have a heads up on something like that. But uh, be happy to do that just as a quick courtesy to at least point you in the right direction because it sounds like you're doing a lot of this work yourself. So we're going to go with Dave in Phoenix on a 2004 Jeep Liberty. Go ahead, Dave. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Man, yeah, thanks for taking my calls, guys. I have a uh, that Liberty uh, battery went dead. While I had the battery out, uh, went to get the new one. My wife opened the back hatch, which on the Liberty is a separate glass and door, which is electronic. Uh, after I got the new battery hooked up, the glass would no longer latch unless I took the back panel off and took a screwdriver and latched it manually. Um, I thought maybe the latch had gotten burned out from it being out of power or something. Um, replaced the latch. That didn't work. Still wouldn't latch. Um, and then uh, one of the guys at the Jeep dealer said, well, it's because it, uh, it reset in an open position, so put it in a closed position, unhook the battery for an hour or two, and it should reset to a closed position. I tried that, and it's not working either. I just can't get this back glass to hook anymore. Does that sound familiar to either one? I almost well, think you would have to go in there with a scanner and, and actuate that solenoid through the, through the body control module. Yeah, I mean, I've never heard of it particularly on the Jeep model, but, you know, we have a Nissan Cube at the shop. Uh, several different kinds of cars, all kinds of weird things will happen when you change the battery, and especially when you change the battery and open a door or move an air conditioning control or something like that. So loses its home. Yeah, it loses its home. So probably what you're going to have to do is find a shop that has the right scan tool, uh, probably a Chrysler branded scan tool, and go in. And there could possibly be a relearn or a reset procedure. Uh, a body control module that's what's called a bcm reprogramming might be in order uh th that's what i'm thinking it's just it doesn't know where it is it needs to understand what the latched position means and we can go in there with that scan tool we've got the chrysler one at my shop and you can actually actuate you can sit in the in the driver's seat with a laptop and roll down the windows open the sunroof change the radio volume turn the turn signals on Open and you know undo latches, all kinds of of things. So that, I just didn't know Virginia Auto was that advanced, but this is got a, it all, Dave. This we've is an argument I had on Facebook the other day because people think you know just jumping a buddy's car or changing a battery or all those things is just normal stuff, and it is stuff we can all accomplish. You know, even if we're not that mechanically inclined. But I'm the argument I had on Facebook was about jumping a car. I had a guy at my shop the other day. He changed the battery. Now his car was stuck in four low. Well, somewhere in that process of changing both batteries, it was a diesel truck, something sparked an arc, and now the TCCM, which is Transfer Case Control Module, is now bad. It was a $600 thing, you know, but just from changing batteries out. Some of this stuff happens, so there is some tricks, you know, whether it's turning the headlights on, if you're jumping a car, things like that. But don't take it as simple as the old days. I mean, you could do anything under the car of a, or under the hood of an 80s car back in the day. You couldn't really mess much up. Well, you know, and that comes to you know a totally different subject, Dave. How many times in the shop have we had something and you get, well, it wasn't like that before? I rolled <laughs> down the window. It's 190,000 degrees outside, and we get in your car and roll down all the windows, and your power window doesn't work, and now it's our fault. Or you know, so our repair can be complicated and, and, and strings attached <laughs> many, many times when – when, when there's there can oftentimes be consequences of something that is 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 seemingly easy. Well, Dave, say, thanks so much for the call. 602-277-5827. 602-277-KTR. You can also get a hold of us on text at 411 
888-900-9923 if you want to text your questions there. So we've got a phone call from Brian in Tempe. He's got a boat motor question, and I'm a little nervous because I don't think about boats. <laughs> I know they float. <laughs> Go ahead, Brian. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Okay, I got myself a Eliminator, 24 foot. It's got the uh, the Merc engine, 350, and I've had this thing worked on for thousands of dollars. I take it out to the lake, and uh, it just island just great. As soon as I put it in drive, it dies. Before I know it, I'm 150 yards out, and I could never get the thing to come out of drive every time i put it in drive it would die and i was wondering if you guys might have any suggestions what year is it it's a 1987 and so does that have the chevy v8 yes carbureted yes yeah i know they say a boat owner's happiest day is the day they buy it, the day they buy it, the day they sell it. You just confirm but, what Brian's wife has been telling him, Matt. That was not you should not be getting involved in marriage. Well, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to uh, think in the car world. Put the car in drive. Well, the transmission or whatever the boat has, the outdrive is 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 putting the load on the engine. Uh, used to see in that era of car engine, not necessarily in the bigger V8s, but in the small four-cylinders and the Pontiacs and, and Chevrolets, you put them in drive, they stall. A lot of times the ignition coil is bad. So that's probably got an HEI ignition. I'd be looking you know, to, to get a spark tester where you can get a nice fat gap, and you ought to see a blue, bright blue, really hellacious spark out of it. Uh, you know, if it doesn't shock you much when you grab a hold of the coil <laughs> while, while, while someone's cranking it over, it's not got enough there to fire the engine uh, very well. So I'd be maybe looking at ignition coil. I, I'd be looking hard at the ignition system because it's carbureted. You're not shutting the fuel off. There's something that's putting that extra load on the engine is probably causing uh, it to, to die because you just can't fire the fuel anymore. So I'd be looking pretty hard at the ignition system, specifically the coil. But short of that... Uh, we're gonna have know. to get we're gonna have to get a, a boat repair shop at Bumper to Bumper Radio. Once in a while I think I see one at Greg at ADS. He'll have a boat in the backyard. I'm like, hey, you guys work on boats? <laughs> He's gonna burn your house down, David. <laughs> Sorry, Greg, but you are in Tempe, so uh, call Greg at ADS, see if he can help you out on it. <laughs> Thanks so much for I'm the not, call. I'm not going anywhere near that one. <laughs> we're gonna go with Damien in Levine on a two thousand and six Infinity. Go ahead, Damien, you're on bumper to bumper radio. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for my, thanks for taking my call. You bet. Um, w- when I get into a car and I, I turn it on, there's a clicking. It, it seems like it's in the dash, um, and then sometimes when I turn it off, it uh, it'll go ahead and click. You know, I, like a friend of mine had a Nissan Murano, and he said it was doing the same thing. It might be like the air conditioner, some kind of latch or something inside the dash. Yeah, what you have in a dash, and I'm assuming this car has a, a digital or electronic controls. Yeah. You uh-huh. set the temperature. Well, there's, and, and it doesn't matter if it's a Chevy truck, an Infiniti, a Lexus, uh, you, you name your flavor. There's electronic motor, motors in there that traditionally were controlled with a, with cables. You you had the little red and blue scale on your air conditioner, and you slide that that lever over. Well, that was simply just attached to a cable that was hooked to a door on the other end, and it's it's changing the direction of the airflow either to go up and down through the vents or through the floorboard, or maybe you're you're changing the temperature so it's going over the heater core versus the air conditioner. Well, now all those are small electronic motors. And so what you can have is the door might break or that gear that there's a small motor in there and a worm gear. That plastic worm gear may break and wear out, and that's why it's clicking. Maybe you change your battery. This We've had this happen in the shop, Dave. <laughs> it's another one of those consequences of, of doing a repair. You, you change the battery, and now all of a sudden the air conditioner is not blowing out the vents anymore, and the motor loses home, and you sometimes you just can't reset them. But I'd be willing to bet you've probably got one of those mode door actuators or a blend door actuator or some kind of controller uh, failing in there. So you might change the temperature, maybe keep it off a of max and on recirc, and maybe you'll find that you can affect that noise. It might help the shop narrow down, but that is not a do-it-yourself or repair for sure. Well, thanks for the call, Damian. We've got open lines at 602-277-5827. When we come back, we'll take your calls. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio.
Fall temperatures in Arizona are optimal for golf. Long after a chill descends on our friends in other parts of the country, conditions remain beautiful at the Arizona Biltmore Golf Club. And while other Valley golf clubs are closed for overseeding, Arizona Biltmore boasts two legendary courses, the Adobe and the Lynx. So there's no disruption to play, just luscious grass and rolling fairways located right in the heart of Phoenix. What are you waiting for? Visit azbiltmoregc.com to book a tee time today or find out more about their overseeding schedule and courses. Next to your family, there's nothing more precious than your castle, right? Keiko Roofing understands that, which is why we are crazy about quality and protecting you, your loved ones, and your biggest investment. Don't wait for an emergency at your castle. If your roof is more than 10 years old, have the trusted pros at Keiko Roofing give you a free inspection today. Flat, foam, tile, or shingle, Keiko handles them all. From a small leak to a complete new roof, Keiko has you covered. At Keiko, we're proud to install peace of mind by using only the finest materials with the most skilled workers, all backed by the industry's best owner's pride guarantee. Since 1994, Keiko has repaired or replaced tens of thousands of valley roofs with over 50% of our business coming from referrals or repeat customers. In fact, over 98% of our customers say they would refer us to a friend or family member. For a free checkup and financing options, call 602-944-4600 or go to keikoroofing.com for more details. Keiko Roofing. We're crazy about quality. We loved our Prius, but eight years later, it had lost its zip and fuel economy. The dealer told us the only answer was to replace the battery to the tune of four to six thousand dollars. Ouch! Then we found the hybrid shop at Goodworks Auto Repair. For a fraction of the cost, they conditioned the battery like new. The zip is back, and we're once again over 40 mpg. We're ecstatic. A hybrid owner's dream come true. Check out the hybrid shop at goodworksautorepair.com. Bumper to Bumper on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. As I look out the window on this beautiful Saturday, not a cloud in the sky. I am Matt Allen. He's Dave Riccio. And every Saturday we're talking about cars and, and helping you with your car if you need the help. So if you want to get in, give us a call at 602 602- Two seven seven five eight two seven six zero two two seven seven KTAR and Dave, I just saw a text come in. It says Tri City Marina. Now I don't know if that was a dig at you to <laughs> get that boat fixed over at Tri City Trans. We don't work on boats, please. We do not work on boats. <laughs> but I'm uh, the last guy you won't work on your boat. But by we the can way. we can help. I mean, I'm, we can. It's got a motor. We can we can give some advice. Yeah, we I can mean, certainly give advice. Sometimes it's always what's what worth what you pay for. It. <laughs> you know, we were talking in the first segment, Dave, about building relationships and having auto repair. Um, you know, good, fast, or cheap. Pick two. I think I first saw that sign in a shop that I work at twenty five years ago, and uh, it, it didn't mean a whole lot to me at the time. And I'm re- looking at this magazine. A woman has this shop in New York, and this really says it right here. Forget about the pricing. Forget about everything else. We're in a relationship-based business. We're not just order takers. So we have to spend time with people in order for them to understand who we are and why they can trust us. And mm. that's what – I mean, we're not just here fixing cars. We're people in your community. Our kids play soccer with your kids, go to the same churches, eat at the same restaurants. We're around. And, and so we're doing things to uh, – be involved in the community in in fixing cars and you and, can't boil us down to a price, or can you? No, well, on some I mean, things. I mean, <laughs> but that's yes. And I don't want people to get it wrong. We're not just saying open your checkbook no. or your wallet or anything nope, like nope, that. Nope. I mean, I see some things at my shop. Gosh, I feel oh my god, we're, we're more expensive. And then I look at some other repair shops, invoices, doing the Better Business Bureau arbitrations that we do. You look at some things, and I say, good lord, for what they're doing, I should be seventy times higher than mm-hmm. than what we charge. So it, it's all there's a huge difference. I mean, huge difference when we look at invoices from at the BBB, just in how people practice and do work. And you know, I think good paperwork is something that should happen in a good relationship. Because you know, good relationships, good good walls make for good neighbors. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. So they should be we want to put everything down in writing. It should be well explained, well thought out. <laughs> well, Dave, you, know, Dave you, you say something. We write our, at at my shop. We write every. I mean, we type. It's like a dissertation of your car. It's a journal. And and you joked one thing at the BBB. There's a shop that we see in there once 
in a while and you say, well, at least they documented everything. And you go, well, the good news is we wrote it down, but the bad news is we wrote it down. <laughs> so, but, but they should be willing to write it down. We're going to go to uh, Thomas in Peoria on a 1998 98 Oldsmobile Intrigue. Go ahead, Tom. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yeah, uh, on my Intrigue, uh, the check engine light's coming on, the one that's on the right-hand side of the dash. And uh, originally it came on about two months ago, and I would, then I would put a uh, thing it was bad, and I stopped the gas in it and it went off. Well, it did that, I guess, a couple more times. You know, and I put gas in it and it would go back off. Well, now it's just on all the time, whether you know, it's full or on half or a quarter of a tank. And I was just wondering if it might be the gas cap. or But I didn't want to just like start throwing parts at it and not know exactly what it might be. Sure. Tom, I think your phone was getting an incoming call or something. We cut out a little bit there. But your check engine light coming on, again, like the gal earlier with the, with the Dodge Caravan, if it, if it was tied around you, around the episode of you getting gas, it's certainly worth double checking the gas cap and make sure that's on there tight. And for twenty bucks, go to the dealer and get a gas cap. Don't uh, I don't like to use the aftermarket gas caps. We stock all the various ones at our shop for our customers that are OE. But that's the old days. That that was a simple fix. A lot of times, what we really need to do is find out what code is being set, why that light is on, and now that it's a hard failure, it should be not that big of a deal. To, to pin down, I would imagine. And there's, I mean, there is 250 different reasons. I'm picking that number out of the sky, why that light comes on. But there, is, there may be a correlation between this gas and getting gas and gas cap. You know, it's, it's worth a $20 guess in 1998. Chances are it needs a new gas cap either way. So it's not a waste of money to go ahead and do that. So thanks so much for the call, Tom. We're going to go with Andy and Gilbert on an 06 Mazda 3. Go ahead, Andy. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey guys, thanks for taking the call. Appreciate it. Um, 2006 uh, Mazda 3. Uh, I've been noticing lately, not so much anymore because the temperatures are cooling down, but when the air conditioner uh, comes on, it actually wants to stall the car out. Um, it drops down the RPMs. The car kind of violently shakes, but then it picks the RPMs back up. I'm going to say somewhere around an average idle. Between four and five hundred, don't quote me. I'm actually driving my wife's car right now, so I can't tell you. Um, but it does that as the compressor comes on, or at least you hear the click from underneath the engine. And then when it clicks to turn it off, it seems like nothing was ever the problem. Um, and I don't know kind of where else to go short of you know spending some money to have them uh, look at. I usually take it to one of the auto repair shops here in Gilbert. Well, uh, what you're going to find there, Andy is you've got to have air enter the engine in order for the for the engine to run. So you've got to have air and fuel come in. And, and that car, I, I'm not sure on that exact model year, but I'm pretty sure that car has an electronic throttle body and a, and a electronic gas pedal. So there is no cable between that's connecting the two. So it's fly-by-wire, so to speak. And what will happen, you'll get carbon buildup in the throttle body. And that can, and that's going to restrict or choke off the amount of air coming in there. So when you go to turn on the air conditioner, the computer sees that. There's an input. You hit the button. The computer sees that, or there's a pressure change, and the pressure switch sends a signal. The computer says to itself, oh, look, the air conditioner's on. We're going to have extra load. We need to increase the idle. And then so the computer's going to open that throttle slightly. And this is happening fast. I mean, right now. It, it, it's happening. And and so that could be part of the problem that could be restricted. The other, If it isn't the fl- fly-by-wire setup, then you're going to have maybe what they call an idle air bypass or an idle control motor, and those can get carboned up and dirty as well. Sometimes there's an adjustment, but most of the time the computer is what's taking care of all those adjustments. And this goes back to um, some preventative maintenance. This is one of those items where we do at the shop fuel injection cleaning. I don't like to say flushing because you're not cleaning them or doing a throttle body service. You've got to keep the engine free and clean and breathing. No difference than if you're going to go run around a block, but you've got a wet rag cover in your mouth. The air is not going to flow so easy. Same thing with the car. So you're saying that that whole process may be slowed down. I mean, he turns the AC on and his idle is getting dragged down to 400. It seems like there's a delay before the engine says, hey, God, we, need more, we need more juice. It speeds yeah. it back up. And yeah, that could be slow, a slow idle air control motor. 
it, yeah, it could be dirty with carbon. It could be uh, could slow it down or just restrict it. it. In this case, it sounds like it's just slowing it down a bit. So, but you've got to be careful when you go clean those out. You just can't go. It's not one of the things that they, you get the guy that's washing the car to do for <laughs> 99 bucks either because you can really foul some things up. So you've got to be cautious with it. And if you've got a good shop in Gilbert, stick with them. That's the, you know, again, we've been talking about relationships and getting to know your shop. Stay there. Go run it by them. And, and I would bet that's what it is. Well, thanks for joining us. If you're looking for a good auto repair shop because you don't already have a relationship, we don't want to come into that because if you've got a good shop stick with them but go to bumper to bumper radio.com thanks peter for running the dials remember never to text and drive we got some interesting pictures on the facebook page bumper to bumper radio.com see you next week